Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about long-term food storage. Now I have a ton of stuff out on my table today that I've brought out from my pantry and we are going to dive in and really talk about the food that stores really well versus the food that doesn't and also how to store it properly to really get the full life out of the food that you are buying whether um, it's buying from a store buying in bulk or growing your own so this is, might be a long video but i promise it is all going to be stuff that if you are trying to have food security and you are trying to really put back for you or your family this is the video for you so let's just dive right in on the stuff that you are going to want to have in your food storage because it is going to last practically indefinitely. The first thing we're gonna talk about are the hard grains. Now when I'm talking hard grains, I'm talking about hard red wheat berries, hard white wheat berries, durum wheat berries, buckwheat, flax, uh, corn. All of these, if stored properly, are practically gonna last indefinitely. Now, when you look online, you're gonna see where it'll say, 30 plus years for food storage. And that's because they're not gonna say that it's gonna last indefinitely. But if stored properly, it will. Now, will it lose some nutritional value after that 30 years? Probably everything that we are gonna talk about after that expiration date, it's going to start losing nutritional value, quality, but it would still be edible in some cases. The wheat berries and hard grains like corn are one of those things that are just going to last you forever. They will outlast your life. So how do we store those? My personal preference is to store them in the bigger containers. You can get excellent pricing on bulk food storage, especially your grains. So Corn is something I'll never have to buy and unless my husband doesn't work where he works anymore. He works with corn, so I always have corn available to me and I always have it in my long-term food storage. Another thing is your wheat berries. I buy mine from Azure. They're an excellent company and it's super cheap. If you look at the difference in buying the wheat berries versus buying flour, you're going to why haven't I done this? Um, so with that being said, you're getting the most bang for your buck buying in bulk anyway. So I store my hard grains in big storage containers, whether that be five gallon buckets, three gallon buckets. These, um, these came from Amazon. When I bought them last year, they were super, super on sale. Um, they are not on sale anymore. Um, I will leave them linked down below. They are nice. They have um, gamma lids on them. You get a nice airtight seal. They are food grade, um, but they are a lot more expensive than what you can buy five gallon buckets with gamma lids or regular lids for. Um, so that is just something I will leave these linked, but um, you can use a five gallon bucket and it would be the same thing. Uh, that's how I would store mine. Because if I'm going, if I'm thinking about my long-term storage, I'm not gonna buy a little five pound bag and be like, oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm gonna get the big bag and then know that I have enough to last. There's no point in having long-term storage if it's not gonna last you a long time. That's my personal opinion on it. And the pricing, you can't beat it. So on the term long term. So now, depending on what I put in these will depend on if I use an oxygen absorber or not. That's what you would use to make this the ideal environment for it to last indefinitely. Right now it is an airtight seal, but there is oxygen in the container um, we trapped it in whenever we shut it so that the oxygen isn't coming out so for something that you are going to get into like for instance this is where I keep my bulk sugar and I am in it fairly regularly I have a gallon container that I will fill up 
and I have in my pantry and then I will refill it whenever needed. That could be anywhere from a couple weeks to a couple days depending on how I'm cooking. So this does not get an oxygen absorber. There would be no reason to put one in there because you would need to replace it constantly. This, however, is my backup wheat berries. So I have wheat berries that are in one of these that I've been getting into because I haven't had uh, flour. So I've been having to use my hard red wheat berries, which I've talked about in an Azure haul. They are for long-term storage. Well, I ran out of my white wheat, my hard white wheat, so I needed the hard red wheat. Uh, so since I've been getting into it, I haven't had an oxygen absorber in it, but this one is a backup. This has an oxygen absorber in it and it does not get touched. It is strictly in long-term storage and that's where it's gonna stay unless I need it, something happens, or if it's, um, which really doesn't apply to this, you don't really have to rotate it. Some of this stuff you have to rotate just because it doesn't have a long shelf life. This, I could not touch it for the rest of my life and it would still be okay. It does not even need to be rotated out like you would do um, dehydrated or canned goods, for instance. So that's my talk on those, the hard grains, if you're doing them for long-term storage. Put an oxygen absorber in there. Make sure it's the CC that's needed for the size container that you have. And then just leave it be unless you need it. So um, you can also do uh, mylar bags with oxygen absorbers. You can do um, this one would need an oxygen absorber, the gallon jar. But the uh, wide mouth and small mouth, regular mouth jars, those you can vacuum seal and it's exactly the same thing as putting an oxygen absorber in. Um, but if you're buying a bulk amount, this is gonna be insufficient, inefficient way to use your space when you could just have one big thing instead. So next up are the soft grains. And so when I talk about soft grains, I'm talking about the grains that have had some type of process done to them. So steel cut oats are going to last a lot longer than a rolled or instant oat. And um, a whole barley is gonna last a whole lot longer than a pearled barley. These are all things you want to consider when you are putting things in your storage. Uh, so for this category, it's kind of like your oats, your barley, your quinoa, and then I also add rye and uh, soft white wheat berries to this. While the rye and uh, soft wheat berries could possibly last close to the hard, they're not gonna get quite there just because these are a lot harder grain and so they're just gonna last longer. Um, but with your oats and your barley and your quinoa, you want to get as close to the original grain as possible. So instead of buying a pearled barley, buy the just hulled barley. Not only is it going to have more nutrition, but it's going to last longer in your food storage than a pearl. Um, but also the pearl barley has essentially no nutrition compared to the hulled barley. There's still a lot of nutrition in it, but it's not anywhere compared to a hulled barley. Uh, but these are going to last about 20 years. Uh, they could last longer. Um, they're just because they are processed in some way. They just aren't going to be able to keep their integrity together as well as a whole uh, hard grain. But they will still last a really long time. Now, as far as storing them, they're going to be stored the same way. Uh, with oats, I usually get a size kind of like this. It doesn't have to be a huge container, but you can store. I do like to store a lot of oats. As far as barley and quinoa, those I love to use, but they don't get used as frequently as corn and wheat berries. So because of that, I don't store as much. And so those are more likely to be seen in a gallon jar 
where I've just stuck an oxygen absorber and then I'm gonna let it you know do its thing in a nice cool dark place um, but you can store them in the bigger containers the same way you would a hard wheat um, I just don't I'm still getting my family acclimated to adding the weird grains as they put it into our meals I love them but it is a process to get the kids and the husband um, used to these grains so I don't have a ton stored instead I have a lot of little varieties that way um, once I figure out which ones they truly really like then I'll get a larger amount and have it in the storage long-term storage for the 20 plus years next thing I want to talk about is rice so the rice is another great thing to have in your food storage and the reason it is after the soft grains and not mixed into it is because there really is a variety to have to work with when it comes to your rices and they have different levels of being able to be stored <clears throat> so the absolute best rice to store for long term is wild rice and what's sad is it's not even technically rice it's shaped like rice but it isn't actually in the rice family uh but if you're wanting a rice to store long term it's going to be the wild rice it is right up there with your hard grains if stored properly it'll go indefinitely so this is a great staple to have is the wild rice I get mine from Azure, um, so if you're wanting to stock up that, I would look at Azure because they have the best price um, that I have seen on wild rice. But this is going to be your indefinitely. Then you're going to go to your white rices. Now this can be a range of your long grain white rice, short grain, your jasmine rice, basmati rice, anything white. Those are going to go for about 30 years if stored properly. So if you're not wanting to get the wild rice, your next best bet is to get white rice, uh, whether that be uh, the varieties I said or just good old rice. This is not a good way to store it. These still need to go in their forever homes. Um, what you really don't want to store long term is brown rice. Brown rice has um, oils in it that will go rancid even in a properly stored condition. So brown rice, I do not advise having in a long-term storage. Wild rice and white rice are going to be your long-term storage options. Brown rice is going to last about five years. Uh, sometimes less. How do you know it's gone bad? It's going to smell rancid because of the oils that are in it. So... For this, the brown rice is going to be a working pantry staple. It's going to be something that you're going to want to be rotating on a semi-regular basis with your other rices to get this used up in that five-year time. So that is the rices, and they're going to be stored the same way the grains are. Uh, again, these, so for the wild rice, I did five pounds and it ended up being a gallon plus a quart uh, worth. So just to give you an example of what you would need storage-wise, um, this would be something that I would definitely, definitely just put in these types of containers and then use my vacuum sealer. That way, if you did have to get into it, you would be able to pop the top off, get what you need, and then immediately you could vacuum seal it back and then it's good to go. Whereas if you're using an oxygen absorber, you're going to have to keep replacing the oxygen absorber as you're getting into it. So that's a great way that vacuum sealer, I love my vacuum sealer. You can have stuff in your long-term storage, but yet go in and use it whenever you want and then put it back to a long-term storage quality, if that makes sense. So that is another tip. So the next thing we have are our beans. Now, beans are another great staple to have in your uh, pantry if stored properly. 
They aren't going to last as long as the rices or the grains, but they're still a great thing to have. So these are obviously not the ideal packaging for beans or any type of um, long-term storage in general. You would want to put these in either a five gallon bucket, a big Mylar bag, um, if you're wanting to keep them in this state, jars, but honestly, I would go with more like the gallon um, or five gallon Mylar bags to put these in with an oxygen absorber or um, a big bucket. That's what I would use for these. Uh, but they will last 10 plus years uh, stored properly. Again, the same way you would do one of your grains. You want it to have no oxygen and a nice low moisture environment. Uh, however, these will, the longer, whether stored properly or not, these will start to get hard. So the older the bean is, the harder the bean is. Um, to where if you're trying to cook a 10-year-old bean versus a 1-year-old bean, you would be able to pressure can those beans and they are still going to have a really good bite to them. They're still going to be edible. They're just going to take a lot longer to break down and get to a soft bean consistency. But these are actually going to get um, half of them. The reason they're still in the bags Half of these are going to be turned into spicy black beans, which I use for refried beans, Mexican beans, or chili. And then the pinto beans are going to be canned for refried beans. Uh, but I'm using half of each for canning, and then the other half are going to go in half gallon jars and then be vacuum sealed so that they are good to go indefinitely. Um, and with the dried beans, you also have like your lentils. Uh, your split peas, anything like that that is a nice, hard, dry bean, uh, you're going to be able to store for 10 plus years. So this is yellow peas and lentils, actually, and they are vacuum sealed. It is actually from the end of 2019 is when these were done. And so these stay in my pantry. They are long-term storage. I don't have any desire to use them currently, but they are there if I need them. Um, and if I start getting close to the date and they haven't been used yet, I'll probably go ahead and use them uh, close to like the 10 year mark um, if they don't get used before then. So it's really, you could use them as a working pantry or a long-term pantry, but they do have a less of a shelf life. Um, and while they could last longer, you have to remember the quality of them is going to start dropping. Okay, so next up is pasta. The number one thing I hear about storing pasta long term is that it's perfectly fine in a bag or a box. And I'm just going to flat out say no, it's not. Um, you'll get people saying that pasta does not go bad. But if you have ever had stale pasta, you're going to call bull on that uh, because you can tell a difference whenever the pasta is stale. So the box is going to be the worst way to store the pasta. It is not airtight. It is not protected. It is just in a cardboard box. The bag is going to be at least sealed. So that's a little better, but it's still not great. I advise putting them in glass or mylar bags uh, just because you're going to be able to get the best environment for them that way. And you're also going to get the most life out of them that way. Uh, they're going to last 10 plus years if stored properly. If not stored properly, you're going to get two to four years out of them. When And I know you can buy the wheat berries, the durum wheat, and make your own pasta. And then you're not even having to worry about storing it. But for those that don't want to go through that step, in the process of uh, making your own noodles, then I advise doing either the Mylar bags or the glass. I choose glass just because it's a more durable, and so having stuff in bags and boxes is just begging a little mouse to go, ooh, look, dinner, and then you lose your food storage. 
Um, and anyone who has had that issue or issues with bugs, ants, um, anything like that, these are just not ideal. They are just not a good way to store, even if you're wanting to do just a working pantry and not store long term. I would still take them out of these containers and put them in something more durable. Um, and with that said, if you do live in a place where there are mice or ants or whatever, I would store these not in mylar bags because while they will keep the light out and they will keep um, the oxygen out, they will not keep something from biting through that bag. Um, so that's just something to think about. But so stored in an airtight container, oxygen taken out, they'll store 10 plus years. I like to store them in jars that I can just do a vacuum seal on that way because I like to keep a variety of different noodles for different um, dishes. So that way I can just go into my pantry. It's in my working pantry, but I have enough to where it could be considered long-term in with uh, noodles. And I'm like, okay, I want to use these noodles today. So I pop the top off, get the noodles that I want out, and then I vacuum seal it back on and it's good to go right back into the pantry. And I'm not having to worry about, oh man, I gotta put another oxygen absorber in there, and then you forget, and then it doesn't have the oxygen absorber, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so sugar is one of the best things to store in long-term storage. If stored properly, it is just like your hard grains. It can be stored indefinitely. Now, the quality might go down, and it might get hard the longer it sits, but it stores beautifully in a nice airtight container with no moisture. With that being said, though, do not put an oxygen absorber in this. The way I like to do it is um, I told you I have my big container that I put 50 pounds worth of sugar in. And that I'm getting into on a regular basis to refill my gallon jars. But for long-term storage, I throw these in half-gallon jars that I can use the vacuum sealer on, and then I vacuum seal them. You do not want to use an oxygen absorber. It will turn this into a brick that tastes funny. Um, so it is just, just don't do it. Do not use an oxygen absorber. Um, it just, it ruins the sugar, but that's how I get it into my long-term storage while also having a working pantry amount of sugar. I have my 50 pound, pound container that I'm continually filling up and taking from, and it sits in my pantry in the ideal environment. And then I will vacuum seal in half gallon jars so that there's no oxygen but I don't have that oxygen absorber in there. So that's something to remember. You can use the vacuum sealer to get all the oxygen out. And then it is an ideal, ideal condition to store indefinitely. With that being said, powdered sugar is another thing that you could store the same way. I usually just make my own powdered sugar. It is so easy. I have a video on it. It takes literally no time at all to just make your own powdered sugar. If you wanted to just store powdered sugar, you would be able to store powdered sugar in an airtight container, vacuum seal it, and it should stay good for a long time. Um, but I advise just making your own. And then you are only have to storing, you're only having to store one type of sugar um, to be able to get the powdered sugar and also the brown sugar. So all brown sugar is, is molasses and sugar. The more molasses, it's dark brown sugar, less molasses, it's light brown sugar. Again, I like to just make my own brown sugar. This is actually from the holidays because I was feeling super lazy. Uh, but you do not want to store brown sugar long term because it's going to go bad. Um, because it has the moisture in it from the molasses and it's just not going to store well. If you want to store brown sugar, store sugar and then store molasses. 
molasses will keep for a really long time on its own and sugar will keep for a long time on its own. So store them separately and then make your own if you're wanting to do brown sugar in a long-term storage situation. Okay, next I wanna get into some more of the smaller nitty gritty type stuff. So still long-term, still could be longer term storage, but it is not going to store like any of the other things that we have talked about so far. Um, so the first being things like spices and tea and coffee. Um, let's talk about those first. So I store my spices in jars. So I have like my bay leaves that I buy in bulk. Those are in gallon jars in the pantry. I have my cinnamon vacuum sealed in half gallon jars, except for the one pint that I do have on my camera to use for tea. Um, and then like, let's see what I have here. I have like a rub, dry rub, or a homemade uh, spice mix. This is actually jalapeno ranch. Um, all of these if stored properly, can last about four years before they start losing their integrity. So what I mean by that is, like say this for instance, right now it's good to go. I do have, it's a Parmesan lid. They're great to have for your spices, by the way, if you need a nice tip. But things like um, <coughs> your dried spices, your herbs, things like that. If stored in the airtight container, vacuum sealed, oxygen absorber, whatever, they will last four plus years. Um, so they could be a long-term storage item. And I am very adamant, anytime I talk about long-term storage, you want to make sure you have spices there. Um, there, is, there is nothing worse to think about, especially if you're a cook or just love food thinking about having to eat, say, the same bowl of rice or thing of beans every day and not having any spices to change it up. Spices are the key to happiness when you're having to eat the same bowl of something every day. Tell me I'm wrong. Um, so, spices are a great thing and I highly recommend adding spices to your long-term pantry, even if it's just salt and pepper. And with that being said, salt is another thing, absolutely indefinitely. I have it in a, a big container, like, ooh, like this. I have the 50 pounds of salt that I bought from Azure in uh, December. And I will always have a large amount of salt. Salt is not only a key nutrient that, or has key nutrients that you need in your body, but it is a great way to season. Um, same with pepper. If you're gonna store pepper, store the uh, peppercorns and then grind them yourself if you need them. Um, they're gonna last longer than an already ground product. And that goes with like bay leaves like this, cinnamon like this is gonna last longer than an already ground up cinnamon or a ground bay leaf. Um, but after that four year mark, you're going to start noticing that it doesn't have quite the same flavor as before. So my dad, for instance, he has spices that are like 20 years old. Does he still use them? Yes. Do they still work? Yes. Are they as potent as mine that are only a year old? No. It really loses the potency the older it is. So just keep that in mind. You do want to rotate spices out of long-term storage just so you always have like that four year range in there um, so that you're getting the best quality for those spices. Um, <clears throat> maple syrup, it will last a long time unopened. Once you open it, it's not gonna last very long. But until you open it, it is a great thing to have in storage. Um, I don't know how fresh 
maple. I assume, um, I haven't got to do that yet, but I assume that if you're putting it in jars and sealing it, it's going to last quite a while in your pantry. I only have a the store bought variety that is sealed. Um, that's what I'm talking about. So don't take my word if you make your own. Um, but I assume if it is sealed in a jar, it's going to last a good amount of time. Um, now, as far as teas and coffee, so we are avid tea and coffee drinkers. Tea is going to last a really long time, four plus years. <coughs> but again, the same with um, your spices, it won't keep its integrity. It's going to start losing its own. Oh, the reason it's able to last is because it is a dried herbs, it's dried leaves, herbs, spices, put into a bag or a loose leaf if that's what you use, I suppose. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's good to have. You can stock up on it. It's a great item to stock up on. It gives great variety to just having to drink water. And it is much better than storing sodas and flavored drinks um, sugar packets, which have all sorts of stuff that you don't want in your body. Um, but like sodas, they're going to go flat. They're going to, uh, lose their taste and it's not a good thing to store. Uh, whereas this, you just need some water and then you can, you know, have some variety. Uh, just, it's just not going to last as long as everything else. You will want to rotate that. So let's talk coffee. <laughs> I am an avid, avid coffee drinker. Coffee flows through my veins. Um, I am probably 90% coffee and 10% water. Uh, my husband enjoys coffee, but not quite like I do. So I would use this, like if I was going to put this in long-term storage, or not long-term, working pantry. Um, coffee is not something I would put in long-term storage. I know people do more power to you, but it only takes so many times for me getting sick from trying to store coffee long-term for me to just not want to do it. Um, if you're going to store coffee, I advise storing whole beans. They're going to last longer and they are also going to keep better flavor longer in a whole bean form. And then you definitely want them to be vacuum sealed or an oxygen absorber. You don't want any oxygen getting in. Um, I would store these in um, jars if I was going to do long-term storage. However, I drink so much coffee that I can buy pounds upon pounds and I will still need to buy more. Um, I drink a lot of coffee. So it's, while I would love to have it in my long-term storage, you will not see me have it in my long-term storage. Um, I just, I will stock up whenever there are sales of the coffee that I like. And then at that point, I, you know, I'm using my coffee every day, multiple times a day. And then when another sale comes up, I buy more coffee and so on and so forth. So I always have coffee rotating in my working pantry, but I never have it for more than a year past its date, which I never have coffee though because I drink a lot of it. Um, but that's my personal preference. I have tried to keep it long term in vacuum seal and I just, I'd rather just keep buying it. And if I run out, then I guess I'll be pulling up dandelion roots and roasting those for my coffee. Uh, we just gotta take what we can get. Uh, so onward, baking essentials. That is another thing that you want to have for working pantry versus long-term storage. They really so like your yeast, uh, baking powder, baking soda, those are all going to lose their potency the longer you have them, whether they are sealed or not. Um, they are stuff that last about a year-ish. Um, you can start, say, baking powder, for instance. You can start noticing it not working as well. And same with baking soda. 
Uh, you can use it older, you know, two to four years. You can still keep it. It's just not going to give you what you're wanting out of that product. Um, to extend the life, of course, vacuum sealing or um, like I keep my yeast in the freezer. That prolongs the life of it. I wouldn't do that with uh, baking powder or baking soda. I would just vacuum seal those. But yeast, I do um, keep that in the freezer to prolong its life because I do buy that in bulk from Azure as well. Great price. Um, so that's something to think about. It's a working pantry item. You really don't want to store those long term because they're they're going to get to a state to where they're going to be useless, no matter how you store them. Uh, okay, first. So something that doesn't do well long term at all is your dairies. Um, I know you can water glass eggs. I know you can freeze dairy. And we'll get to the freezing in a moment. But if you're wanting to store things like eggs and dairy long term, I would advise getting freeze dried. Now these will last a long time as long as they are stored properly, vacuum sealed and whatnot. Uh, once they're opened, like these pack of those, once they're opened, um, you're going to want to put them in a different container and vacuum seal them so that they stay fresh. Um, I would love to one day have a freeze dryer and then I will do my own. Until then, I do have to rely on companies to do it for me. Uh, but one day I will have a freeze dryer. Um, so that's a great way to, if you want to put dairy into your long-term storage, they will store really well long-term if stored properly. Um, then we have like home canned goods. Again, these are great for long-term storage. They will last uh, pressure canned. Um, I would probably stick to around the five year mark. I know they say 18 months on the new lids, but honestly, if it is sealed and it has been kept in the ideal environment for canned goods, then um, I say five years is a good, I know some people do longer, but I think after five years, the quality is really gonna go down on your um, food that is in there. But it's a great way to store meats, broths, vegetables, um, in a way to where you don't have to worry about power or freezer space. Excuse me, go ahead and can. Um, and that's the same with like, uh, getting ahead of myself, fruits and uh, pickles and stuff like that. These, uh, I usually give a two year shelf life. Again, you can do it for longer, but these are just water bath canned. And so you're more or less like you are sterilizing because they get canned for 10 plus minutes, but it's not pressure canned. They're just water bath canned. Um, so eventually they aren't going to be good anymore and they definitely won't last as long as a pressure canned item. And then we also have our dehydrated stuff. So like right here, sun-dried tomatoes, I have a bunch of carrots. These I also vacuum seal or you could also do mylar bags with um, oxygen absorbers. They will keep for a long time. I like to use mine within five years just because again, the quality starts to go down, but I have used at that five year mark and they're still um, good to eat. So could last longer, definitely something you could put in an extended pantry, but just remember that you have them in there and don't let them just sit, like kind of rotate them out. Um, they're also dehydrated stuff is really good to make instant meals, whether that be in Mylar bags for like camping um, to make kind of like MREs, a mixture of uh, freeze dried goods and dehydrated to make MREs or something else I like to do besides that, because my husband camps, um, is to make ready meals 
in quart size jars to where all you have to do is add water and then you have an instant meal. So like hamburger helpers and stuff, excellent way to use freeze dried and dehydrated items, vacuum seal them, and then you have long-term storage, but they're ready meals um, for just those easy things. Then you could put them in long-term for your working pantry. Okay, now let's get to the stuff that doesn't really last that long. One of those being peanut butter. Um, so peanut butter is something that a lot of people stock up on. I stock up on it. I have a ton of it. But because it has a high oil content, it's going to eventually go bad. So even if you never open the jar of peanut butter, it's going to eventually not be something that you want to eat. So will it go past the expiration date? Yes. I have had um, year old peanut butter. Yeah, year old peanut butter and like past the expiration. And it was still perfectly fine. Um, but I've also had year old peanut butter that was not perfectly fine. Uh, so if you're gonna go that route and store it in your working pantry and store a bunch of it to where you may not use it by the expiration just use your best judgment and smell it because you'll know if it's not good it'll smell off or it'll smell rancid because of the oil same with other oils so canola oil stores really well but i don't use canola oil um, i use either olive oil um, I use coconut oil when I have it, but I rarely have it. What I like to use is either butter or bacon fat, tallow, or lard. This is tallow that I canned. Um, if you, and I have videos on uh, rendering tallow. It's really easy and it's awesome to cook with. Um, these are not canned, they're sealed because it was so hot, but you don't have to can them. As long as you um, render it properly, these will last, shoot, a few years at least. I go through mine a lot, so I really don't know after that point, but um, I would say as long as it still smelled good and it didn't smell rancid, then you're good to go. Same with like olive oil. And then you have things like your ketchup, mustard, mayonnaise, uh, mayonnaise. I like to use by the Best Buy date. Um, I will go past it a little bit, but again, this has um, egg in it and it has oil in it. So it is going to eventually go bad. So I like to stock up, but then I'm going through it. You can also just get that all together and make your own. It is delicious. I mainly do that whenever, um, I have the egg supply coming in. When I don't have the egg supply, that's when I go into my working pantry storage and do that. Um, but like this, it'll last, mustard will last well past the expiration date, but eventually it's gonna start to separate and then it's just not gonna be appealing to eat anymore. Um, and then you have things like dried fruits, dark chocolates, all of these are great things to have in a working pantry, um, but they're just not going to store well longer term. With that being said, freeze dried is a different story. I'm not talking freeze dried um, fruits. Those I think do last a lot longer um, <coughs> and they're great if you're wanting to store that type of stuff long term. But as far as just dried, these um, will go past the expiration date, but you don't really want to have them in a long-term storage setting. Um, last, well not lastly, almost lastly, flour. So you would think that if you can store wheat berries long-term that you would be able to store flour long-term. And that is not the case. Um, when we were talking about the soft grains versus the hard grains, we were talking about how, because it was processed, it wouldn't last as long. So a already milled flour is not gonna last you more than about 
18 months. Um, about one to two years is going to be the max for these bad boys. Um, now, I buy flour in bulk, um, about 100 pounds at a time. But I am constantly cooking with it. So, the way you would want to store flour, if you were wanting to go that route, again, it's for my working pantry strictly. It is not for long term. But I store mine in big containers or gallon jars, something to keep it in a controlled environment. And then I'm constantly in it, so I do not vacuum seal. And I, well, okay, sorry. If I put it in half gallon jars, I vacuum seal. If it's in the big things, I don't put anything in it because I'm getting into it. But if you were wanting to store it for a longer period of time, I would advise vacuum sealing or uh, mylar bags with oxygen absorbers or glass jars with oxygen absorbers. But it's still going to go rancid or mold something. Um, it does not stay well long term. If you're wanting to store flour long term, invest in a food mill and get wheat berries. Same with like corn mill or grits versus corn. I store corn and then I make corn meal, corn flour, grits. And it's delicious by the way, if you do it yourself. Oh, also on the flour, white flour is going to last longer than whole wheat. Whole wheat has a higher fat content and it'll go rancid faster than a white uh, all purpose flour. So as far as freezer, I'm going to briefly uh, discuss that, touch base. Technically, freezer food never goes bad. It has expiration, but it's frozen. It is stuck in that spot that it, is, that it was frozen in. <coughs> However, the quality and nutrition of that item is going to drop severely after that expiration. It's just going to keep going downward to where you may get a piece of meat that's 10 years old from the freezer and while it is still okay, that bad boy is gonna be freezer burnt, it is not gonna taste good, and it is not going to have the nutrition that it originally had. Um, same with like vegetables and stuff like that. Uh, plus, I, I mean, I love using my freezer. I have a very well-stocked freezer, but you have to think you know, what if there was no power? What if there, you know, was a power outage? I've had that happen where um, one of my freezers quit working and I spent all day and night canning up meat from my cow just so it wouldn't go bad because I couldn't afford another freezer right away. So that's other things to think about. You'll see people with lots of freezers and I am all for that. I have uh, more than one freezer, but just think about that in the back of your mind. You have a backup plan if something goes wrong with the freezer or the power. Um, and then just in general, just to round out this equipment that you would need to be able to store long term is going to be like freeze dryer, dehydrator, um, pressure canner, water bath canner. Uh, oxygen absorbers or um, or and the vacuum sealers I recommend doing the vacuum sealer first and then going into oxygen absorbers just because they're they're pretty much one-time use like yes if you're really quick getting into whatever you're getting into they may last a little longer but they do stop working where um, if one of my vacuum sealed things pops off I can pop it back on um, and vacuum seal it. Um, and then of course, Mylar bags, five gallon buckets, these little gammas, uh, containers, glass containers of any type. It does not have to be ball. Um, like this came from Goodwill, you know the drill. Like just make sure it's something that can seal is what you're looking for. Um, okay. So real quick, foods that I would not store long term are going to be really anything processed. Um, anything that is overly processed is just not going to keep as long as the whole original product. So while I do have flour um, stored in half gallon jars of vacuum seal, 
they're not my long-term storage. I will get to them fairly quickly. Um, I do the whole grains as my long-term storage. Same with like drinks. I do not store drinks long-term. I will keep a nice supply of like coffees and teas and stuff. But if I'm buying soda, which I don't drink soda, but my husband does. If I'm buying soda, it is going to get used. It is not being put in storage for a year or two years, whatever. I do not do that. Um, same with processed dry goods. So like your um, granola bars and crackers, cereals. While I do like to have them in my working pantry, they aren't something, they're short term, I guess I should say. It's not going to be something that I'm like, oh, I have five years worth of cereal. No. Um, the cereal and crackers and bars, granola bars, stuff like that, which I like to make my own um, so they never get put into storage. Those types of items... I just have as short term. They are just to fill the pantry. They're gonna get used within the year, well within the year, more like six months. Um, they're not gonna be something that I store. They're also not gonna be something that I can. I know that people uh, vacuum seal or dry can um, crackers and stuff like that. You will not see me do that. To me, that is an inefficient way to use my space because if I wanted crackers and I didn't have crackers, I will make my own crackers. Um, that's why I have my long-term storage of all the different types of wheats. So that if something happens, I don't, I'm not, I'm not storing processed stuff. I'm storing ingredients so that I have the means to make any of the processed stuff that other people are stocking up on. So for instance, I am in a place to where I don't have to freak out if there aren't crackers on the shelf, which there aren't hardly any crackers on the shelf. I don't have to worry about that because I can make my own. Same with noodles. While I do have a great supply of noodles right now in my pantry for long-term storage, if I didn't have that, I still have the means to make my own noodles. So that's what's great about um, having long-term storage and working storage is you don't have to freak out when things aren't available because if you are an ingredient, uh, have ingredients in your long-term storage, you can make the short-term storage items. Uh, one last thing, and I only do this because it's just, it's just one of those things. ramen. I call them ramen noodles. I know it's not ramen noodles, so if you hear me say that, just act like I pronounced it the right way. I always call them ramen noodles. I know they're ramen. Um, so, while the packaging is not great on these, like, they are sealed, so it is better than a box. Um, the packaging isn't excellent. They are a really great thing to have in your pantry. Uh, they are super cheap. They fill you up because they are high in carbohydrates. You get the sodium because it's essentially salt and carbohydrates. Um, and they're very versatile. So while they do have the different flavors, say you have leftover meat, you can add the meat to a couple packs of that and feed your family. If you have, you know, some vegetables, throw some vegetables in and feed your family. Eat it by itself. Feed your family. It's a super cheap way to fill bellies. Uh, while it is not the healthiest or nutritionally dense food that you could uh, store, it will store for a very, very long time. Um, and if you wanted to get more life out of the already dehydrated goodness, um, you could store these in like five gallon bucket, throw a bunch of them in, um, just to give them a harder outer layer so that nothing could get in them, but they're, they're going to last a really long time. I have never had a Raymond noodle go bad. 
Like, I know they have an expiration date, but I've never had one go bad at all. Um, so, just wanted to throw that out there because I know a lot of people do like them. And uh, if you're poor, which when my husband and I first moved out on our own, these were like breakfast, lunch, and dinner were uh, ramen packets for a good while. Uh, so, <clears throat> I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it answers some questions that you may have had on storing long-term, how to store. Um, if I didn't answer one of your questions, just leave it down in the comment section and I'll be more than happy to uh, respond to it in the comments. Um, and if you have not subscribed, go ahead and hit subscribe um, so that you don't miss anything. I cook from scratch. I am always using the stuff in my pantry. I garden, I can, I dehydrate, I do it all. I am all about being prepared and just um, self-reliance, relying on what my husband and I can provide for us and our family, um, whether that be having the knowledge to store store-bought goods or growing our own. So I hope you enjoyed and I will see you all in my next video. Thanks for watching.